All right, this is the part where I will be taking over just like if this was a live stream because it's going to be easier for me to explain uh, inventory layout related stuff as I'm showcasing it uh, as I'm speaking. Okay, so I like to divide uh, inventory layouts by sections. Uh, I usually call that like the top section. So the top section here is basically just a row of rapier. My bottom section is going to be the, the Stormhawk Axe and my middle section is going to be all the weapons the, that I have here in the middle. I also have a fourth section which I have not put on this uh, particular layout right now but the fourth section is basically support stuff. So the stuff that I would be using for, uh, like for support on my character. So usually it's going to be shields, uh, stuff in that nature. Here I'm not going to put it in any order because I don't need to for this example, but the top section is the top, the uh, the upper section, the middle section is basically all the weapons you're going to be using. The bottom section is the pretty much what you would get for the bottom uh, trigger tick swap. And then here I have another weapon pool. So in this other weapon pool, my top section is basically the same thing here. It's the 25 rapiers. The middle section uh, the Misericord Riders uh, daggers here are part of the middle section and so are the halberds here. So this is my whole middle section uh, that that um, uh, that space right here. This is the whole middle section. And then the bottom section again is the Stormhawk Axe. Here the support section is all the way at the bottom. I have this over here. So uh, this right here, this is just for showcase. I have not arranged these uh, to be battle ready. I just want to showcase um, like uh, how I would go about making inventories. So this is going to be easier for me to explain. So there's different ways you can set up each and every section. And obviously the middle section where all the weapons are is going to be, uh, I would say the one that is going to define your inventory the most. But all the sections um, will 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 dictate how your inventory looks like. It, it really depends on what you're looking for. <clears throat> so let's start by showcasing all the possibilities you can have for the top section. Let's start by cleaning the inventory fully. Basically sending everything into the box. You'll definitely want a lot of the same weapons depending on what type of inventory you want to make. So I like to start with a clean inventory with nothing in it. And then for the top section, there's really three choices. Uh, either you go for a top section that is a simple line like this. So five of the same, really. Uh, it, you can either do that or you can get a top section that is basically 25. So the advantage of having 25, it's going to be easier if, uh, if I grab these. The advantage of having 25 is that no matter where you are in your inventory, when you go for a top row swap, you will you will right away go to the um, to your top row swap, but you won't just get to the top row swap. You'll also set up your inventory so that the down swap will get you back to the exact weapon that you were using. So if here I was using a claymore with storm stomp, I go for a trigger tick up to get the rapier, and then. I finish my opponent and then I want to go back uh, to my main weapon because there's an another opponent nearby and I'm looking to get the Storm Stomp Claymore. So if I want to go back right away to the weapon I had, it needs to have 24, 25 of the same uh, up top or basically like the same, the same way it is set up. So it, like uh, you would be able to do this by just Clicking up to the rape here, here, you'd be able to get the same effect and you would only need one row for this. But what if you have uh, this as your starting weapon? So say if I was using a uh, Royal Knight Resolve uh, Shotel here. Well, now I can't really go quickly 
and grab my rape here like in the heat of the moment like i would need to use the trigger swap and that's why we have the inventory set up with 25. so because i have 25 of those no matter where i am in the inventory going up to the rapier i can always go back down with the same trigger trigger tick swap as opposed to if i did not have 25 you'll see what it what it, what happens then so if i only have one row up top you can still get to the top by one trigger tick but when you go back down you see there when you go back down you get sent back to another weapon in your inventory in that case it's the dagger so if I was to start with this, I want to get the rapier and I want to go back to my initial weapon. Now I can't because it just puts me back to something else. So it becomes confusing, especially in the heat of the moment. You're trying to, to reset to get back to what you, you had. You want some consistency in your swap. So personally, I prefer having 25 up top as well. But if you want your inventory to be cleaner and more simple, you could go for only 5 up top like this. So this is the advantage of 25 up, up top versus 5 up top. And then as far as the top row is concerned, you can also go for a, a top row that has uh, 2 times 25. So uh, basically you, you have 2 weapon types for your top row. So for that though, you would need 25 of each. So the most logical... Uh, top row that has 25, uh, 25 of, of one type uh, twice would be um, daggers. So if you had 25 daggers up top here. So this would be a more common one. You have daggers and you have parry shield as uh, 25 parry shield. So here my, my shield are mismatched. But uh, if you were to set up an inventory for this, you would likely have shields that... I mean, they don't need to match, but at least you'd want to have uh, the parry that is the carry and retaliation because it has more parry frames, something like that. And it doesn't cost uh, FP when you spam it. So usually if you were to go with a... Um, actually, it's just make sure it's set up properly. Let's just add a bunch of weapons just to simulate the proper inventory here. Okay, there you go. Okay, so right now I basically have a 25 top twice uh, to simulate what you would have like in a fight. So if, for instance, I was playing with the shuttle, maybe I'll want to parry my opponent. So I do a quick swap for my top row and then I get the parry and then I'll want to swap uh, back to something that has high critical damage. So the Misericord Dagger is the smart choice. So... That's why you'd have the top row, all shields, 25 of them, and then another 25 up top for the daggers. So that would be ideal if you want your inventory to, to be uh, parry ready. So that would be a good example of a top row that's useful for parrying. All right, now let's go with the, the bottom row. The bottom row is really the exact same idea. Right here, my bottom row is only Stormhawk Axe, so Stormhawk Axe only. I only have one row, although it's going to be pretty rare that you're going to have only one row at the bottom. I'm going to show a few examples when you would want to have uh, one row at the bottom. And um, before I do that, though, I'm going to showcase a double row for the bottom as well. Um, actually, let's just put that back on. Okay, there you go. So this is going to be my middle row here. I'm not going to have any top row just for the sake of showcasing it. So here, my bottom row is only one row of five. Like we said earlier, it's not It's not going to be that common. What's going to be more common is, again, 25 uh, for the bottom row. So this is going to be more, more common, more useful to have 25 of these like that. Because for the same re reason as we mentioned earlier, when you swap, you want to like, be able to get back to your initial weapon in one tick without having to hesitate and go around and re-pick re your weapon manually by looking around the inventory. So you'll want to have something that uh, you can swap back and forth quickly, basically. And why 25? Again, because you have access to those axes no matter where you are in that inventory, no matter which 
Which one is your starting weapon in that middle section? Every every single placement is going to give you the Stormog Axe with a single trigger tick swap. Uh, for um, a single right trigger tick swap. Okay, so for the bottom row, um, again, you can double it. Uh, for this particular build, I like to double it with the Ball Sack Hammer. Uh, ball Sack Hammer is another good swap. It has more range than the Stormog Axe, so I like to use the Ball Sack um, sometimes to through walls or stuff like that. Like if my enemy is like right behind uh, a wall here, for instance, right here, I might do a Ball Sack here just to, you know, clip them through something. So I like to have the Ball Sack for my, uh, my lower section here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's the same idea, it's just that you get two, tri two trigger ticks instead of one, but uh, it's really the same deal. Um, the reason why you'd go, say, for the ball sack hammer at the very bottom of the lower section and the axe uh, above it is you, want, you always want to have the swaps that you need uh, the lowest amount of time to pull off to be quicker, to be like only one tick away, and the ones that matter a bit less to be two ticks away. So if I don't need my ball sack in the heat of the moment, uh, I don't need it like right away, so I don't need to have it as the first trigger tick swap. I can get it as the second trigger tick swap. So having two tick, having it two ticks away is still pretty fast, but it's not as fast as one tick. Like one tick, you can really, you can really pull it off like very very quickly in a fight. Two ticks still, but there is this, there's still a, um, a a bit of downtime that could cost you the game, uh, depending on on how you're playing with it, with the uh, with these swaps. Okay, so this is pretty much the bottom section and the upper section. They're both really similar. Uh, they're both related to the trigger ticks, but there's also an other variation for both the lower section and the upper section and we're going to showcase it right now and it has to do with the with the support weapons so the shields um pretty much anything that you don't use in the heat of the moment or you don't need access to right away when you're fighting uh, this this might be a good inventory for you depending on uh how you want to set it up and what you like and whatnot so we're going to start with the the simple uh, only one one row up top. So normally, if I was to go with one simple row up top, I'd go with five clean rot raptor here. But because we want to give you guys another example, we're gonna go with only three rapiers up top here, and you're gonna see where I'm going with this. So after three clean rot rapiers here, maybe I'll want to start uh, putting some weapons that are. Uh, that are su like support weapons so stuff that I'm not necessarily going to need in the heat of the moment and Maybe they're even like uh, my off-end weapons and stuff like that. So uh, Here, let's just uh, let's just use fingerprint shields I don't know if I don't really use fingerprint shield, but you might want to carry it on your build Maybe if you're finding a tryhard and whatnot and you want to pull out the tryhard sauce uh, when you see someone with it so basically you want to get three weapons and then two support weapons, three weapons, two support weapons for your middle section. So let's do that real quick. So for the middle section, I'm just going to pick weapon randomly here just because I want to showcase how the whole thing looks like. So three weapons and then uh, here uh, we, we want to have like two support thing on the side. So three more weapons. Uh, let's grab some Zwei. Again, three more or two more support weapons like Kite Shield and um, Icon Shield. Those are two like very useful support uh, items because the Kite Shield gives you uh, more defense and more damage on low HP, which you will not really use during most of your time playing. But when you're low on HP, it's good to have it. And same thing for the Icon Shield. You'll not always have that shield behind you because it's really just regen. So you'll most likely use this when you really need some regen, but you might not use it, uh, you know, all the all the time when you're fighting. So those are the type of items that you would want for support. Although it does not need to be um, just shields. 
Uh, it can also be weapons, like for instance here, if there are some weapons that I want, for instance, that I can't necessarily wield, so I know I'm not going to use them for swapping, but I might like want to have them just in case on my build. So say here, I cannot wield the Ensper Rapier, but maybe I'll want them just for the clean rot, uh, the clean rot effect, you know, something like that. So I'll put them... Or same thing here for the Star Scourge Greatsword. Maybe there's someone like behind a wall somewhere that I just want to clip. Like I might want to have them on the support side. And um, you know just have access to them without needing to swap to them quickly. So we're just going to complete this real quick. Let's uh, get three of these here and two more support whatever it is. Let's go with uh, these. Okay, so the inventory looks like nothing right now, but once you have it, it looks more like something like this. You see here? So my inventory here makes more sense. Let's get a bottom row as well of... Um, just to get a complete inventory, to get a, a, a full picture. One, two, three. And then two more support just for the sake of it. Let's put this and then the other one. This one, okay. So here you see this? This is a full inventory with... Everything really that you need, you have your top row over here, you have your bottom row over there. It's a lot cleaner, it's a lot more compact. Obviously you have less options, so the smaller, the cleaner, the least amount of option, but the easier it is to maneuver with a clean inventory like this. So obviously here, the stuff that I chose is not necessarily... Um, uh, you know, I did not handpick exactly which placement goes where and which, which Ash, of, Ash of War I'm using. But usually it would look like something similar to this if you were to go for something like a clean inventory that is simple, uh, easier to remember, um, really like good inventory for beginners really. I would say go for something cleaner like that. The, like really the main upside is that you don't get lost in an inventory like that because everything is on screen and there's nothing hidden. So there's nothing that you will miss or that you will search around while you're fighting. So everything, everything here you can see and you won't have problem, um, you know, hesitating in fights to, to switch to something in specific that you might want. All right, so the downside for this is obviously you have a lot less options. So if I was to set up my midsection here, which we're going to do here um, in a second, if I was going to set up my uh, middle section, I would have much less options for swaps because I only have a few weapons to, to work with. So this is mostly something you would be using when you only have one main weapon. So an inventory like this would be more optimized for a single weapon. So here, for instance, if this inventory was to be um, optimal for something, it would probably be this poison way here that's in the middle. Because this Poison's Way would have access to a cross, so a weapon up top here, weapon to the side, to the side, down here, and maybe even two tick down would be another one. So my quick swaps would be uh, all the side and upper and bottom arrows like this, and then another more support swap here with two arrow down with the side. So I would have access to um, one, two, three, four, and then... Um, five and then six with the storm off and the clean rot so and maybe a seventh with the the support site at the bottom because it's still fast enough to to do two arrows down so an inventory like this would be optimal for about like seven seven quick swaps ish and then you have your your support to the side here, which you're not really going to use in the heat of the moment. Like those are not really swaps. Those are more for utility swaps. So stuff that you want to handpick at a specific moment, not necessarily in combat. So they don't need to be really close to anything or they don't need to be accessed to uh, quickly. So that's the idea here. And I, I talked about the cross here, like, uh, most of the time, all the, the middle section is always going to be based around one portion of a cross or a full cross. So let's just reset that inventory real quick so we can get a, a full middle section to showcase all the variation of a middle section that we can have. So let's get a top section here just to understand everything better. And then let's get a middle section with a bunch of things like that 
I'm just randomly picking for now, but we are going to handpick what we get in that middle section here in a moment. Okay. Um, actually... Just to get everything consistent, we're gonna remove that real quick. And we're gonna get... Um, 25 Stormlock Axe here. It's gonna take but a moment. And then let's grab uh, what would be our support. So let's just assume that these right here are our support stuff. Okay, so this is more like a standard inventory where uh, you have your middle section here. Uh, everything in your middle section, you have access to the the uh, one tri one trigger tick up. You have access to the clean rot. Um, one trigger tick down. No matter where you are, you are in the in the inventory. You have access to the stormlock axe. So the only time you don't have access to the stormlock axe is when you start with the uh, the clean rot. So you could remove one section to make it smaller and have access between clean rot and stormlock axe, but I find it uh, more consistent to not have access to it because sometimes you might be um, you might be on the uh, on the axe and you're looking for the rapier and then you swap up and you don't get the rapier and that's normal because you can't make an inventory that's that's like this you, you would need only rapiers and uh, and stormhawk axe so I like to have it so that I it's always two ticks so that it's consistent no matter which uh, Stormlock Axe I got in my inventory, it's always going to be too thick to the rapier. So it's to get consistency here. So that's why I like to not have um, the Stormlock Axe accessible from the rapier. So uh, for the middle section here, the idea again is to get a cross. So here the cent the absolute center here is, go is, is going to be the... Um, the placement you'll want your main weapon to be if you're making your inventory based on one weapon. Uh, here, uh, it randomly happened to be the Banished Knight Halberd. Uh, what do we have? We have Flame Strike on it. So, the Ash of War that's going to be on that weapon will usually be something that's like your base Ash of War, the thing you use the most on that weapon. So, Flame Strike here on the Halberd, probably one of the um the smarter option because uh flame strike on a halberd is very common it's it's very good it's very effective so having flame strike as your base uh ash of war on uh, on your main weapon is a good idea then after that you branch out with you have these four swaps that are near your main weapon so in that case it's the heavy militia shuttle uh, we have another halberd, which you could put another Ash of War on it. Here, the Claymore. I don't think you could really make a use case for a Claymore. There would be better options here. But you never know. Maybe um, maybe you, you, you want um, a Giant Hunt, for instance. And you don't want to be weight-restricted. You could have it on a halberd as well. But maybe you want it on a Claymore, I don't know, for more damage. And like the Colossal would be too heavy or something like that. So you could make a case for a Claymore next to it. If needs be, but uh, like we said, this is this is just a random uh, inventory, just for the sake of this example. And then at the bottom, you'd have like maybe a sword dance on a site like this. And then two ticks down would be maybe something like a um, a lightning uh, or thunderstorm, or not thunderstorm, but thunderbolt. Uh, you know, you swap to it and you get like thunderbolt like this. I know this is not the exact placement, but uh, if we had thunderbolt here. Uh, it would not be a bad idea to have a, um, a Thunderbolt swap two ticks down. Because sometimes you need Thunderbolt in the heat of the moment. But usually it's when you're trying to shoot at something far away. So you don't need it like right away, right away. But when your opponent is starting to get far away, you might want to swap to something like Thunderbolt. So this is a, an idea. So again, it's really like you want to have space for two tick ups, uh, two ticks to the side, two tick down. Uh, it's very simple and your inventory is based on the center weapon and then the weapons that are in the side here so in this case these here and these here and these here 
those weapons can be like really anything you want. Uh, you won't really have access to the same swaps as your main weapon, but you'll always have access to the um, to the top swap, which is the clean rot, and then the bottom swap, which is the storm axe. So this is a good inventory when you're really ma mainly using one weapon. And obviously at the bottom you have your support that's not really related to the rest of your inventory. So um, it, it's, it's just there because you need it really. But if you don't need it, you don't really need to have any support stuff if you don't really use it. But most of the time people will have like some shields, some stuff, you know, uh, a talisman to cast stuff. Uh, you know what I mean? It's that That sort of thing. Okay, so... Let's go with another type of middle section. So another type of middle section would be to have your layout based on multiple weapons. But because having a full cross like this uh, would be impossible because you really only have space for one big cross, you'd go for a smaller cross. So here a small cross would be, um, would be only a small one here. Let's make a real one just to showcase it. So let's make a a real uh, middle section here to showcase what it would look like uh, if we were to make an inventory for multiple weapons. Because for the most part, that's probably what you guys will be using and what you'll be looking for. So you don't have space for um, multiple of these, like a, a large amount of these. So for instance, if you want a, a full a full cross for one tick, you'd have, um, let's say one random weapon up top, and then you'd start your cross. Um, so to make it easier to understand, we're gonna keep the same weapon. So it's gonna be one Albert here, and then I'll go with more support stuff here. Um, those are going to be support weapons and then here I'm going to start my cross. Those would be the same weapon with different Ash of War but again this is just for the sake of this example. And then you'd start your under your other cross after this right here. So let's just use a Zweihander for this example. Uh, let's do this here, this here. Um, then <clears throat> two more Zwei. Here I'm trying to pick the same weapon so that you guys can visually understand what I'm doing better. Because if I had a bunch of different weapons, it would be more confusing. But because I'm picking the same weapons, uh, you guys uh, kind of understand the patterns a little bit better. So uh, here we would have another row of whatever for the very bottom here. So actually, let's get some Stormhawk Axe just to complete the thing. Okay, so here we have what would be like a two in like for two main weapons. So here the main weapon we have again is the Albert here, and then the other main weapon we have is that Lightning Zweihander here. So as you're seeing, you have access to a cross for both, right? Both of your um, two weapons of your choice. And what I would like to do, um, if this was an inventory that I would be using. I would basically go for the same Ash of War on my Halberd, uh, on my Halberds and my Zwei. So if that middle one here, for instance, is um, Storm Stomp. So let's create that inventory as if it was something that I was going to use. So if I was going, going to pick my main Ash of War, I would go for either something like Royal Knight Resolve or Storm, Storm Stomp. Let's go for Storm Stomp for this one. So both my middle weapons would be something with Storm Stomp. Then at the top, um, let's say I would want... Um, let's say I want Giant Hunt for, for the top. So I want a Heavy Hitter for the top one. So Giant Hunt up top, same thing for the Halberd. Um, giant hunt here um for the side maybe i will want uh, bestial roar so every time i press uh the 
the arrow to the side, I would get Bestial Roar for both weapons. You could get something like Keen because maybe you don't necessarily want um, to use these like like you don't want to fight with the weapon itself you just want the ash of war available so you could go for keen because it does better damage like uh, it's always going to do more damage um on keen for bestial roar so some ash of war are specific like this and the bottom one maybe you'll want to have a a lightning ram why not lightning ram let's go with lightning because it always does more damage lightning so again here let's pick lightning and then for the one to the side here, uh, maybe you'll want your weapon to be poisoned just to, you know, get some chase down or something like that. So, here notice that I don't have like flaming strike, which I normally would be uh, for these inventories. What I would be, would be doing if, uh, if this was my inventory, I would pretty much probably replace one of these, like one of these halberd and one of these zwei for a heavy uh, Godskin Stitcher with Flame Strike on it. So like, let's say the 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 bottom one here or the side one here, I would be replacing that as way for a Godskin Stitcher and replacing that Halberd for a Godskin Stitcher. Uh, either way though, uh, our inventory that we have now works. So we have Storm Stomp on our main weapon. One tick to the side gives us Beast, beast Roar uh, and then from our main weapon again one tick at the bottom gives us lightning ram and one tick up top gives us giant hunt and one tick to the side uh, from our main weapon gives us uh, poison mist so again it's going to be the same deal for our halberd which is our main weapon in that case the top giant hunt the side uh, bestial roar and then the bottom lightning ram so you get the idea so because of that you can basically play around with those two weapons and every time you click on the side it's always going to be the sw like the swap that you get used to because those are the same for your two main weapons so this is what an inventory based on two main weapons would look like now we can go and and start getting into more and more uh weapon for your inventory to be based around so this is for two main weapons but if you're the type of person that likes to use like multiple weapons then you, it, you start to reduce the amount of swaps that are available for each weapon uh, but you can still get a decent amount so you would go for a cross minus one side so it would look like it would look uh, like something like this. So if we take our halberd again, uh, let's go with actually, let's go with this. Let's go with uh, our zwei, and um, let's go with this here. Okay, then again, let's go with our halberd, then our zwei. And then maybe this here, our halberd again. And then we have space actually for another one. So let's go with Claymore uh, this way. So here I'm making another one. Like uh, I'm being deliberate with uh, with where I place these. Uh, let's let's make uh, heavy rapier here. This. The, um, the militia shuttle are fillers, the site is fillers, but the rest are going to be deliberate. So let's put uh, one claymore here, one here, this, this. You're going to be seeing the pattern here um, very soon. Uh, looking for an extra claymore as well. Go for a site. Another claymore. If I can find one. There you go. And then one here. And then more stitchers. And we should be good to go. One stitcher here. And the last one can be anything. Just to not confuse you guys, I only use the uh, shuttle and the site for fillers. But when I say fillers, 
usually you'd want something like a weapon that you don't need to swap too quickly but that you plan on using in specific situations so again something like we mentioned earlier the weapons that we did not have the requirement for like the Ensper rapier or the Scar Sc star scourge greatsword those two here would be perfect fillers for an inventory like that so uh let's go here with, with what we got so here our inventory is based on uh part of a cross so it's only missing one side so my main weapon here is this albert here i got the swayhander here i got the claymore here and i got the uh, stitcher here so all of these have access to one, one one tick up uh one tick to the side one tick down like all of them So here you have, you basically have four. Your inventory is going to be ready for four main weapons. So you could go on like this. Uh, you could remove the bottom portion as well. And you would just get that L here. And you, you would be ev ev uh, even able to sneak in even more weapons. But the idea is that you don't want to start, um, you don't want to start making inventories where like uh, each weapon Actually, that L might not even be a good idea when I think about it. Actually, it depends. Uh, I haven't thought about the making an inventory for the, the L shape too much because you might also want instead just straight line. I think it might actually be better to have just three like this. And then you get three here, you get three here, you get three here, you get three here. So you might sneak in five and you get your lower section here that can be like really anything. So that might be better that way. But uh, as far as this goes, the idea, again, is to have the same swaps available uh, no matter where you are in the inventory. So now that you, you can visualize the pattern, uh, I'm going to go up one notch and I'm going to make this same layout that we see here. But I'm going to handpick which weapon I'm placing where to give you an idea of what type of consistency we're looking for when we're making these. So now that you saw the pattern itself, I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to be deliberate in each weapon I'm picking. So here I'm, I'm picking a heavy greatsword and that heavy greatsword is always going to be our top, uh, our um, arrow up swap. Why? Because I'm going to put a giant hunt on that greatsword for every single one of these swaps. So I'm going to have four of these and every time I press one tick up, I'm going to get that massive uh, heavy great sword giant hunt swap okay so okay we got this we got our filler here let's put a filler the uh, handspear rape here uh, after that we will want another one then another filler and then another filler i would actually use the uh the site uh, like different variation of the site and the militia shuttle for fillers because they're very useful against shields and you j you might not just want to have uh, Royal Knight Resolve on a site you also might want to have like uh, sword dance or different variations because maybe you want you don't have time to pull off the Royal Knight Resolve because you're getting pressured and whatnot so get okay, here my main weapon the halberd and then my side swap the heavy godskin stitcher here uh, my other main weapon let's get the uh, claymore here for my other main weapon my side weapon same thing the godskin stitcher here my filler uh, again now my bottom weapon actually bottom weapon let's go with um, my bottom weapon let's go with the militia shuttle but with uh thunderbolt so the idea is that you might want to use thunderbolt but if the guy is blocking you'll have more chip because it's a militia shuttle so thunderbolt always does the same damage as long as it's lightning no matter which weapon uh, you're using so might as well go with something that has chip damage uh, built in so militia shuttle here and then we start another uh, another row so we go with a uh, uh uh, colossal sword here it's lightning but we're going to be changing the ash of war um after uh, after we get ready with this so let's pick a pike for a filler here uh and then we need another uh, colossal ultra 
Let's pick one here. There you go. There's one right there. And then another filler. Let's pick a scythe again, just to, uh, just for the sake of it. And we need another filler, actually. For another filler, I might want... Might want something like uh, something that I might not use as often. That I might use like try easy. I don't know. I like to use serpent as my main weapon, but for this particular layout, let, let's use it as a filler. Okay, and then this uh, this section here is going to be based around the lance. So lance here is going to be right there. Um, stitcher here, and then another weapon. Okay, we need another main weapon that we might want to use. So. Uh, because we use Wayhander, let's go with Wayhander. It's going to be more simple. Okay, almost done. We just need a few more fillers. Uh, let's, let's get a dagger in there. We don't have a dagger. Maybe you'll want to have a dagger for like a soft swap to get a repost or something. So that's another good filler. And then let's get a shuttle here. Um... For more fillers, I like to have some uh, poison stitchers, so maybe another stitcher here. Um, maybe... Oh, actually, yeah, next one is Thunderbolt, and last one would be a filler. Okay, so we actually have a full inventory here. So the reason I did not show this first was because it would have been too confusing for you guys. Let's get a bottom roll just to showcase that this section is finished okay so now let's just put some ash of war so it's not as complicated uh, so it's easier to understand so we don't have enough ash of war to make a full inventory because uh all these ash of war are scattered around uh <laughs> around my box here like they're placed on different weapons so unfortunately it would take too long to to place ash of wars on every single one of them but um Let's just go with what we got. So the idea here is we have our starting weapon, which is, or we have our starting weapon. So we have the heavy halberd here. That's one starting weapon. We have the claymore. Same inventory layout as the last one. The exact same, except that we have consistency in our swaps this time. Or oh, actually, I missed one. Uh, I got a cold pike in there instead of a shuttle. So my mistake. I would need to redo that. Let's do it. Let's just re redo it real quick to make it proper. So, there you go. So we have the shuttle here that would be normally lightning. And then we missed up on the pike and so we can grab our sequence here as it is and everything should line up perfectly. There you go, everything lines up perfectly. So my main weapons here are, these would be my main weapons, the halberd here, the claymore there, um, the Lance here and the Zwayhander here. So from every single one of these weapons... Oh, actually I fucked up the... Uh, fucked up this part here. This part would need to be a Stitcher. Let's just uh, make... Um, let's just correct that again. Okay, so... This here would be a Stitcher. Uh, let's pick a Stitcher somewhere here. There you go. All right, so now our inventory is more consistent. Okay, so we have the starting weapon with the Zway right there, uh, the Lance, the Halberd, and the Claymore. So from every single one of these weapons, if I would be fighting, and let's just, uh, let me just put that on so I don't, uh, I have the requirement for each weapons that are important. So if I'm fighting here, I'm pl playing with the Claymore, hitting my opponent, they're running away, they're panic rolling away, they're far, they're light rolling. I can go and swap to the Stitcher for a long running attack. And it's like that for every single one of my weapons. So same situation, oops, same situation here. Uh, I'm fighting, getting a hit. My opponent is light rolling. I need something that has a lot of uh, distance travel for a roll catch. Same thing, I'm playing with the lance. 
get that swap. You get the idea, right? So, crouch poke. Catching my opponent, you get that swap. So it's the same idea with every single one of these. So the bottom here would be a lightning. So here I don't have that Ash of War, but I have it for this one. So for every swap, I would you know, do one click down and it would be lightning. Um, for every swap, one tick up and it would be giant hunt with that massive damage for the ultra. So no matter which weapon, let's go for storm stomp and then boom. Unfortunately, it's running night resolve because I don't have enough, but it would be giant hunt like that. So storm stomp. And then you go for a roll catch or something. You get to decide which Ash of War you want and which type of weapon you want placed. But the idea is that you want to get consistency. So an inventory like this would be built for four weapons where the same swaps are the same input no matter which weapon is your main weapon from these four. So this is an inventory base for four weapons. Now, I could go on and on about these. Like like I said earlier, you could make it so you only have access to um, to two arrow swaps from, from these. You could go on like that. Or you could go like as simple as you can where you just put whatever weapon you want to use in your middle section and your only two uh, swaps that are close to your... Um, or that are available from, from your weapons are the trigger swaps. So this is as simple as you could get it. Like if you make an inventory where you don't want to have to worry about any placement, uh, you're like the you could have your the weapons in the middle section absolutely randomized. It does not really matter. You just want to pick, you know, any weapon that that you want that you know you'll be using, as long as you're filling that section up. We need one more. So if you don't want to bother too much with this, it does not really matter uh, where you place these. Although I would highly recommend you, you know, you get something that you're comfortable with and something that makes sense to you. So maybe you want all your stitchers in one spot or maybe you want, you know, all the weapons in one stop. Personally, I'm not a big fan of that because like I said, I like consistency better. You don't want to take the habit of eyeballing where your weapons are. You don't want to look around and pick what you want. You want it to be like based on instinct. So that's why we have these inventories set up in advance. So instinctively, if I know I need a fast attack, it's always one trigger tick up and then boom, R1. Always. Basically, you want your swaps to become sort of like combos. Like if you were fighting a fighting game, you know, this combo here gives you a fast attack. So no matter w uh, which weapon you're using, boom, I do that combo and I get that fast attack. Uh, no matter which weapon I'm using here, I do this combo there and I get my uh, my Storm Stomp, or not Storm Stomp, my Thunder Storm. Right? So no matter which weapon I'm using, this combo right here gives me the Thunder Storm. So you get the idea, right? So that's the idea with making good inventory layouts. You want to, you know, you want to have consistency you want your swaps to be the same for your main weapons that you're using or at the very minimum you can have uh, an inventory set up so that at least even if you don't necessarily have access to arrow swaps that are the same for your middle section you still have the the triggers that are absolutely consistent um like throughout your inventories so that's really the idea, uh, the idea with different inventory. And then for your support, like we explained earlier, you could sacrifice one row to the side here for support. Um, it takes more preparation because you need to count the weapons that you're placing and whatnot. Or you can have two for support, although it shrinks down the um, your middle section, so the weapons that are usable. So personally, I don't like doing that. I prefer to have my support being at the very bottom and uh, personally as well what i like to do is for my support i like to have my very very bottom row to be like ranged weapons so if say like this was my support right there uh, i would fill it to be even and then to close off my support lines i would get 
uh, this for support, right? So my very, very bottom row would be something that I use fairly common, but that are ranged weapons. So you not necessarily want to have access to ranged weapon on a pinch. Like you don't need to swap the ranged weapon in the heat of the moment because you'd need the two handies great bows anyway and the, that cannon. So you'll you'll not like uh, you you don't need to swap to it like in one tick. But even then, you just hold the trigger right you just hold the trigger and you get to to that bottom row so that bottom row is something more like a, a utility swap but that's also like um accessible fairly quickly without like having to look around your inventory so no matter where you are in the inventory you just hold down the trigger and you get to the very bottom so that's why i like to have the very bottom row to be ranged weapons so my great bows and my cannon so that i, I don't look for them or i don't like uh press you know different triggers around to search for them i just hold down on the right trigger and i get to them right away all right let's get over the ring section or the talisman section uh while it's it's a very important part of swapping it's definitely not um there's definitely not as many variations for uh for inventory layout for the talismans uh, really, anything goes because all of your talismans are utility swap based. You don't really need to swap to any talisman in the heat of the moment. Unlike in Dark Souls 3, where you would need to have a like a quick inventory access for a talisman like uh, like the cat ring, which is the long tail cat talisman here. You might want to create an inventory with a bunch of dagger talisman where you can you know, swap to a dagger talisman after a critical hit or something. But uh, because the the time for repost is much shorter in Elden Ring, I don't think that would be very viable in the long term. So what I got going on for my personal uh, talisman inventory layout is basically I go for columns. So like uh, one column here... Uh, basically like the, the, first, the, the first slot... I'm going to be using these talismans here. The second slot, I'm going to be using them here. Third slot, these here. Last slot, these here. You see what I mean? So, it's not really complicated. Um, this is really what it looks like. And then I like to have my feathered branch sword and red feathered branch sword at the very top because usually during a fight, I'm going to end up with like, you know, something like this, right? Where I have like... Uh, I have picked like over the five different talismans so at the very bottom I can just go back up with two trigger ticks before I had the ritual talisman but the ritual talisman are your starting uh, talisman if you're using them so you don't necessarily need to have them at the very top but uh, to be honest there's not um, that much that can be said about talisman layouts it's really up to personal preference I like uh, having them in like one vertical row like this. Uh, that's how I like them, but to be fair, like anything is optimal as long as you're comfortable with it. So this is really more up to personal preference as these are utility swaps. So those are not based around uh, swapping something by heart in the heat of the moment. Um, the only one that I would say uh, should be placed close to one another are the ones that you really commonly swap to. So. The Crimson Ember Medallion to... I like the Blessed Dew Talisman, but you could make a case for the Dragon Crest Talisman, for anything really. Um, sometimes I swap it for an, any status resistance. Um, and then for my Ritual uh, Talismans, usually I'll swap them to... Um, usually I'll swap them to like uh, something that does increasing amount of damage. So Claw Talisman and Spirit Talisman or Shorter of Alexander and whatnot. And then my last one, usually that one stays throughout the whole fight. And these I got some variations of the stuff I use a bit less often. So I don't need the Bull Goat Talisman on this particular character. Uh, but I still have quick access to it because it, it's a common uh, used talisman in PvP. So like at the bottom I have like the least uh, or the less common talismans that I don't really use. So these are basically there just to, to be here because I don't really I don't really use them but I have everything if I need to. 
Uh, you know, you never know, depending on the fight, sometimes you might want to use something you don't usually use, but it's there if I need to, and they don't really disturb any of the placement of the thing I use often here. And there's like a clear separation, <laughs> color separation with, uh, with those talismans here. So, uh, again, the talismans, pretty simple. Uh, more up to personal preference, the placement is not as important and there's more variation and it can be really all over the place as long as you're comfortable with it. Okay, so I think I went probably most things. Uh, there's one thing that I did not mention in the, the main section of this vid. It's that uh, you cannot swap while you are getting hit. You cannot swap your, while you're getting hit. You cannot swap while you're attacking. As you see, the inventory is grayed out. Um, those things were different depending on each Souls games. Uh, Elden Ring is the most severe and the one that limits your swaps the most in that regard. With that being said, though, all the swaps that, are, that have been mentioned here are still possible even uh, with that restriction. So... I hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, I'll let the end of this pre-recorded vid play out. This is the end of this live part for me and I wish you guys the best. I hope you enjoy all this content. Take it easy guys.